How much power of control does a government have? China has access to immense amounts of data, photos uploaded by the country's more than 700 million internet users, and a centralized image database of citizens, all of whom must have a government-issued photo ID by age 16. With this huge amount of data, surveillance seems like an easy job with the use of technology. The book 1984, the documentary Citizen 4, and the Cambridge Analytica all relate to modern-day China because they provide examples of how the government gains control and power through surveillance, promotion of party doctrine, and control of information. George Orwell's 1984 is a fiction about a dystopian society that is controlled by the totalitarian government of Oceania. Their slogans are, War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength, and Big Brother is watching you. Winston Smith is the protagonist, who works in the record department in the Ministry of Truth. His job is to rewrite history according to party need. Orwell states, History is continuously rewritten. This day-to-day -day falsification of the past, carried out by the Ministry of Truth, is as necessary to the stability of the regime. Therefore, as an intellectual, Winston doubts the truth behind the party and confronts the inner party of Oceania. Laura Porteous's Citizen 4 is a 2014 documentary about Edward Snowden, who formerly works for National Security Agency, NSA, as a system administrator. Snowden released information about NSA's global surveillance program. It shows that information of internet users are collected through Tempora, which is a computer system from UK's government communications headquarters, GCHQ. The surveillance program violates the Fourth Amendment in the United States and indicates that the government is spying on us. On the other hand, a data mining company, Cambridge Analytica, collects data from Facebook users to run digital campaigns for elections. The Communist Party of China not only collects data of their citizens through a centralized database, but they also control the media to filter information and use surveillance cameras to track their citizens for any rebellious or criminal activities. With the information and power they have as a dominant party in China, the government can increase their power over their citizens similarly to the inner party of Oceania. Through the use of telescreens and thought police, the inner party of Oceania is able to monitor the citizens to prevent any rebellious thoughts and activities against the government. The Communist Party of China also puts their citizens under surveillance through the use of security cameras and facial recognition systems to track on their citizens. In the book 1984, George Orwell states, He knew now that for seven years, the thought police had watched him like a beetle under a magnifying glass. Even though Winston tries to avoid contact with the thought police, the surveillance of the inner party is so powerful that they are still capable of tracking and monitoring him. Meanwhile, the Communist Party of China has a similar approach to their citizens. China is moving in that direction, abetted by a vast surveillance network. Industry researcher estimates China has 176 million surveillance cameras in public and private hands, and it forecasts the nation will install about 450 million new ones by 2020. The US, by comparison, has about 50 million. In addition, a company called SenseTime now provides their latest facial recognition algorithm to the Chinese government. According to Justin New, an early investor in SenseTime, told the Financial Times in January, SenseTime and its competitors can grow so fast compared to elsewhere in the world because video surveillance is a big deal in China. The government controls the budget and there's a huge budget for it so they can manage society. The surveillance in China is so developed that with the massive amount of data, the party can strongly increase their power over the citizens. Surveillance can be the perfect way to monitor citizens, however, it cannot be used to control their minds. In a totalitarian society, promotion of party doctrine is often used by the government to gain more power over the citizens. The inner party of Oceania creates the two minutes hate and the hate week to express the hatred towards their enemy. And the Communist Party of China under Xi Jinping's regime censors information through televisions, newspapers, and radios to promote the party. During the two minutes hate, 
Citizens of Oceania is required to watch the big tele screen to express their hatred towards the enemy of the inner party. According to 1984, the old civilizations claimed that they were founded on love or justice. Ours is founded upon hatred. In our world, there will be no emotions except fear, rage, triumph, and self-abasement. Everything else we shall destroy everything. Already we are breaking down the habits of thought, which have survived from before the revolution. There will be no loyalty except loyalty towards the party. There will be no love except the love of Big Brother. Promotion of party doctrine can also be done in various ways, such as creating a new language like Newspeak, or a national anthem. Orwell states, the new tune which was to be the theme song of Hate Week, the hate song it was called, had already been composed and was being endlessly plugged on the telescreens. In comparison, the Communist Party of China promotes their party doctrine by restricting information on different media. Chinese films, television shows, and newspapers are already heavily controlled and censored by the Communist Party, but control of entertainment and news is likely to deepen. The most powerful monitoring body is the Communist Party's Central Propaganda Department, CPD, which coordinates with General Administration of Press and Publication and State Administration of Radio, Film, and Television to ensure content promotes party doctrine. The Chinese government promotes their party doctrine through the use of media implicitly and slowly influences their citizens by giving new thoughts and information. For example, in February 2016, she announced new media policy for party and state news outlines. All the work by the party's media must reflect the party's will, safeguard the party's authority, and safeguard the party's unity, emphasizing that state media must align themselves with the thought politics and actions of the party leadership. Regardless of the promotion of party doctrine, there are still intelligent people like Winston in 1984 that doesn't follow the majority. And the government uses one strategy to deal with these rebellions, control of information. The National Security Agency, NSA, uses computer systems such as XKeyScore and Tempora to gain information of all internet users. While Cambridge Analytica also collects Facebook user data in order to influence elections. Similarly, the Communist Party of China has a centralized image database of Chinese citizens and thought control camps to control information of the Uyghur population in Xinjiang, China to prevent religious revolts. According to Laura Poetry's Citizen 4, Edward Snowden is a whistleblower. He challenges NSA for the violation of the Fourth Amendment which promises the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures should not be violated, and all warrants should issue. With the support of the computer system XKeyScore, Special Source Operations SSO, a division in the NSA that collects data, and Tempora in GCHQ, the NSA has access to information of all internet users. Snowden stated that there are 1.2 million people on various steps of their watch list. Portress also added that the US spied on millions of Brazilian emails and phone calls. Therefore, the NSA surveillance truly violates the Fourth Amendment and undermines international human rights laws. Another example of control of information is using data to affect the result of elections. Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook's chief executive, went to Capitol Hill this week to explain to members of Congress how the detailed personal information of up to 87 million Facebook users ended up in the hands of a voter profiling company called Cambridge Analytica. And the goal of Cambridge Analytica is to build its own behavioral models to target potential voters in various political campaigns. The political campaigns include Obama's election, the Brexit referendum, and Trump's election. It is also fairly simple to collect data on Facebook because the majority of the users don't question about the security. According to Peter Eckersley, the chief computer scientist for the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Facebook can learn almost anything about you by using artificial intelligence to analyze your behavior. The knowledge turns out to be perfect both for advertising and propaganda. Both NSA and Cambridge Analytica gain access to data without people's consent, and control the information to influence their behaviors. However, it is not limited to organizations. In 2015, 
an anonymous user leaked onto social media various email correspondences between propaganda officials, shedding light on the secretive work of the 50 Cent Party. From those leaked documents, it is clear that the Chinese government has mobilized over 10 million college students through its Communist Youth League organization to take on various online public opinion struggle tasks. Students who participate in the Communist Youth League are used to control information on the internet. For example, negative comments about the party are most likely censored. Other than the control of the internet, vast swaths of the Uyghur population in China's western region of Xinjiang, as well as Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, and other ethnic minorities, are being detained to undergo what the state calls transformation through education. Many tens of thousands of them have been locked up in new thought control camps with barbed wire, bomb-proof surfaces, reinforced doors, and guard rooms. Whether it is through surveillance, promotion of party doctrine, or control of information, governments and organizations such as the Inner Party of Oceania, NSA, Cambridge Analytica, and modern-day China are able to increase their control of power over the citizens. In this modern age, even with the existence of intelligent people like Winston or Snowden, governments or organizations now have the potential to control a whole society.